Hello Facebook, it's Steve Woody, Online Mastery, and welcome to Midday Mastery, Season 1, Episode 9. And today we're going to be talking about when you should work for free. So I did a Facebook Live yesterday at 12 o'clock and I talked about what you should charge. That sparked quite a lot of conversations, there were some messages that come through, there was a lot of people who, obviously there's a lot of... Um, a lot of charge around this subject of money uh, and, and people have a lot of emotional connections around money and so taking out the, the, the personal development side of things and that you know why you should charge what you should charge and, and be worth what you're worth and looking specifically and, and, and purely at the business side of things when you take emotion out of the uh, the equation it's just maths it's simple maths you should charge X because you're adding Y value because you need Z outcome. Okay, so it's just it's just an equation. You work it out. I did that. You can see that from yesterday's video. But today, I want to address something that keeps popping up. People have been mentioning it time and time again. It's when should I work for free? Now, a lot of people who know me know that I've been working for free uh, quite a lot in the past, and so as a result of that, I've kind of learned what to do and what not to do around working for free. So. I'm going to cover that now, and it's going to be quite a short one today. I'm probably going to do about 15 or 20 minutes. I'll answer any questions. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I'm in my new office um, set up for the first time, so I've even got the banners up. I will have the white ball back up. Um, at the moment, it's not there, but yeah, everything's all set up. It's all working. Uh, I'll just give you a quick little tour. You can see. So this is, there's a huge mirror there, which you can see. Uh, the banners are set up, and then here I have my new working environment, my new desk, and also at the same time of doing this, I am also streaming it live on YouTube. So I'm doing a live YouTube feed as well as the Facebook feed, um, which is all working really well. So let me just plug this uh, back in so the power doesn't run out. Awesome. So when should you work for free? So there are pros and cons to this. There's good and bad, like with anything, right? And so what I want to um, to get across first and foremost, like the main point that I want to make is why you should work for free. Because I do believe you should. I believe there is a time and a place to work for free. And to answer the question of why you should work for free, I truly believe that if you are in startup mode, if you are just getting started, and if you are at the beginning of your journey and you have no experience and also you have no uh, results, no case studies, no testimonials, then I do believe working for free can be beneficial as long, as long as you do it in the right way. Because if you're just working for free to try and get your name out there, I don't think that's good. I don't agree with doing that. I don't believe that working for free to try and attract new business is a good model. I think that's really bad, and I think you're gonna end up shooting yourself in the foot because you're gonna educate people to not give you money. You're gonna go out there and say, I'll do my first session or my second session or this for free, or I'll, do, I'll work for free, or I'll do this for free. And all you're doing is saying, I don't value myself, I don't value myself, I'm not worth anything, I'm not worth anything. That's the message that you're subconsciously putting out there. And so, I don't think you should work for free just to try and attract new business. I don't think that's right. I do think you should work for free to get testimonials because it's almost like it's not for free. There's still an exchange. Although there's no financial or monetary value being exchanged, you are getting a testimonial in return for you giving your product or service. And so there is a real um, exchange there. Okay, I don't like the idea of free as in I'm going to give you everything and not expect anything in return. You know, even me doing these Facebook lives, in return, I expect to, to, to reach more people to promote and market myself. See, I can do this for free because this is one too many. If you're going to do something for free, I recommend that you do it in, a, in an area or an environment where you can broadcast yourself. See, right now, I can deliver this, and this goes out to thousands of people. Lynette, good afternoon. So the idea is that if I'm doing free work and it's one-on-one, -on -one, then I'm almost trading my time for money and I'm not getting paid for it. That's a bad situation to be in. Charmaine, hello, good, good morning, good afternoon. We're on the cusp, um, uh, it's afternoon now, right, in, in the UK anyway. So anyway, my point is that if you're gonna work for free, like for example, I used to build websites for free. And so all I was doing was trading my time for no money. 
Trading my time for no money. Trading time for money is bad enough, but trading time for no money? I mean, it was crazy, right? So if you're going to do something for free, you need to understand that if you're going to do it, you want to do it to broadcast yourself. I can do my Facebook Lives. I can do my podcasts. I can do my YouTube channel. Because although I'm doing it for free, it's marketing. I'm promoting myself and I'm pushing myself out to different channels. If I was to do social media marketing, I, if I was to do like pay-per-click or Facebook ads, I would have to pay for every potential customer that I bring into my business. And it costs me quite a lot of money. You know, I'm spending like about £150 to bring a customer into my business. That's what it costs per acquisition. It's about £150 per client. So if I can do an hour a day on Facebook and I can bring in over the course of time 10 new clients, I've just saved myself £1,500. So it's worth doing this in the long term. And that's what you need to look at. You need to look at why you're doing it. So if you're doing it as a way to get yourself out there and broadcast yourself, then do it on an on an on a scale that you can broadcast, that you can go out to a large um, selection of people, YouTube, Facebook, you know, Snapchat, whatever it is, whatever that platform is that you're using, LinkedIn, Pinterest, you know, there's a lot of social media marketing that you could, people turn around to me when they're starting out and saying, oh, should I use SEO? Or how should I SEO my website? Sod SEO. If you're starting out in a business, forget SEO. You know, do best practice, do some things you need, but focusing on SEO as a startup is a stupid thing to do because it's not going to get you any short-term results. SEO is a long-term strategy. SEO is something that you can work over the next 3, 6 to 12 months to get ranked in Google. It's not going to happen overnight. Whereas you can set up a Facebook ad and you can set that live and you can instantly, instantly have traffic come into your site. So you need to look at the marketing channels and what you're doing and why you're doing it. So if you're putting yourself out for free to try and attract people in, then you've got to make sure you're positioning yourself as an authority. You're not being seen as free. Don't tell everyone, I'm doing this free thing and I'm doing this free thing because all you're doing is saying, I don't value myself, I don't respect myself, I don't, I, I don't want any money. It's an exchange. There has to be an exchange, whatever that is. If it's a name and email address, whether it's, um, you know, uh, you're, you're getting a testimonial. And now here's another thing. Testimonials are one thing. Getting somebody to say something nice about you is better than you saying something nice about yourself. I can sit here right now and say, oh, I've made all this money and I'm doing all this stuff and all this stuff's happening. And that's great. And I can say that. But the reality is that when my clients start saying nice stuff like, oh, my God, Steve's amazing. Steve's done this. You know, when I get people like Molly who talk, talks about how I, I transformed her charity by giving her the tools to be able to go out and help people in other countries. Like that's a real testimonial that I can use. And that's why. Like, you've only got a look on the back of my, um, I have a brochure that I've created. And on the back of the brochure, I have testimonials from people, you know. And these are, oh, I, I understand, they're all female. That wasn't intentionally done that way. But, you know, I just, I've worked with a lot of ladies because it's just my target market. Like, sorry, lads, but the ladies, like, women seem to get things done. You know, guys spend a lot of time peacocking and looking at what to do. And women just seem to get on with things. It's just the way, it, the way it seems to be. You know, I'm, I, I can't argue with the facts. That's, that's what seems to happen. So I'm going to target people to take action, right? Uh, that's not to say I don't want to work with men and have guys coming through the course as well, because I do. I have a lot of guys. I'm working with about three or four guys at the moment. And so I'm trying to balance the equation out. But what I'm looking at here are people who I've helped, people that have given me testimonials, real testimonials from people. Look, Steve has empowered me by giving me the tools and skills I needed to develop the next stage of my business. See, that's a real testimonial. Now, I did work for Molly for free. Now, the reason I did that is because she's a charity and I am a part of her advisory board. And as a result, for her looking after me and for me to be involved in such a prestigious charity and to have such a massive impact on a global level, that was part of my contribution. So I'm all for doing that because it was a win-win. I got um, noticed, I got testimonials, I got a lot of uh, great things from Molly. I got to, to build out an amazing system for her and in return, she got a lot of great things as well. She's got all of the tools and things she needs. So I'm not saying you shouldn't work for free, but you, you shouldn't work for free out of scarcity. If you're desperate for work and you're trying to get money, so you're going to put yourself out for free to try and get people in, that's the wrong reason. I didn't work for Molly because I was desperate for business. I worked with Molly because I wanted to, because I had the ability and the capacity to, and because I really enjoyed it. And it's important to understand that. So testimonials is one thing. Getting testimonials is an exchange. So you can work for free for a testimonial. But what I would recommend 
if you were to work for free and you wanted to get something in return for that, I would recommend better than a testimonial because a testimonial is nice. You know, people saying nice things about you, but a case study. There's a big difference between a testimonial and a case study. See, a testimonial is just somebody giving you feedback, someone saying something nice about you. But a case study is where you show, I started here, I did this, and they're now here. They were at a 4 out of 10, I implemented this strategy and system, and they're now at an 8 out of 10. If you would like me to do that for you, sign up here. Do you see what I mean? It's more powerful because you're showing that you have a system, that they were here, that they're now there. And for you to do that, you'll need to have a process in place. The first thing you need to do, if you want to work with someone for free, is you need to sit them down and say, where are you now? On a scale of 1 to 10, in these areas, where are you? You know, and I ask people, on a scale of 1 to 10, how happy are you with your website? How proud are you at your website? On a scale of 1 to 10, what results are your website's getting you? 10 is all the results you want, 1 is that you haven't got a clue. And so I ask people these questions and I go through this and I, gu- I gauge out where people are. On a scale of 1 to 10, how happy are you with your design? On a scale of 1 to 10, how happy are you with the systems? On a scale of 1 to 10, how overwhelmed are you? I ask all of these questions now because that gives me, it gives me a blueprint. It gives me a thing, a model of where they are. And then what I do is I implement my systems and my strategies and my training and my coaching and my consulting and all of the things that I've created. And then in six, tw- six weeks time and in three months time, we check in. So we sit, in, we sit down after month one, two and three, we sit down and we say, where are you now? Where are you now? Are you higher or lower? Have you stepped up or stepped down? Oh, so you can see there's an actual increase. So you've gone from a four out of 10 to a seven out of 10. You've improved. Do you agree you've improved? Great. So now you can see you're measuring, you're measuring where they were and where they are now. They can't argue and say, oh, this person didn't do this or this person. You, you can see it. They told you that they've gone from where they were to where they are now. And you can repurpose that. You can use that. Oh, I took a client from £150,000 a month to £300,000 a month. I got them, you know, I got, I got a client a 400% increase in their revenue over six weeks. They're factual things that you can use as a case study to, to really like solidify what it is that you do. So you're actually getting, so although you may be working for free for that client, you're actually getting something in return. You're getting the ability to use that as a case study to win more work in the future. Does that make sense? I don't want to talk to myself here. I want to make sure that this makes sense and you understand this. And so I'm not saying you shouldn't work for free. I'm just saying that if you are going to work for free, you need to be clever in how you're doing it. Okay, you need to leverage your time and your experience and your expertise and the, and the systems that you have in place. You need to leverage that. So when you're starting out working for free to attract testimonials and case studies so that you can use that to then attract paid clients. This is mega nuggets. I love that. Mega nuggets. That's going to be a new word I'm going to use. Right, so you're about to take on your first client for free. So it's not for free. It's not for free. This is the mindset I really want you to get into. You're taking on your first client for no financial... Um, I can't think of the word. I'm not switching on today. But there's no financial outlay for them. There's no exchange of money. It's not that it's free. Because there is a cost involved. It's just that the cost is not money. The cost that they are paying for you to take them on as a client is that they have to then take their time and they have to get to go through a process so that you can have a case study. And you need to be able to use that as a way to promote yourself in the future. And if they're not willing to do that, then you should not be willing to work with them. Okay, Financial gain isn't the only way to, to, to benefit from a, from a relationship. There's other things you can get. There's brand awareness. There's, you know, there's, I'm, I'm working with a, a company at the moment. In fact, I got off a call uh, with a gentleman just before I started this Facebook Live. And I am now um, going onto the board of advisors for an educational board. So I'm going to be sitting on the board of advisors for an educational board as their technical expert. I'm going to help them in guiding them to build out their online systems because they have found a way um, and they have created a system. They've got like lecturers and professors and people with all sorts of letters before and after their name like on their advisory board working with them to build out this online platform so they can deliver um, degrees so they can deliver what universities are teaching but without the additional debt and the cost that's involved they've substantially reduced student debt 
and they were, they've got the ability to be able to deliver that and to actually uh, provide degrees and to provide uh, the, 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 the testing criteria that's needed without all of that financial outlay that students have then going through debt. And so we're looking at huge, like, I'm talking about massive, massive media coverage of this. And I'm like, there's a huge win for me in that. That case study, that testimonial, being on the advisory board for that, like the marketing that that will provide for me is huge, massive. So I have agreed to not work for a financial reward up front. It's not that I'm working for free because there is a cost. I've taken equity in the business. And as a result of me taking equity, I will get paid. It's just a delayed payment. It's going back to the whole delayed gratification rather than instant gratification. I don't need the instant cash right now. I've had a phenomenal month. You know, my business is like flying through the roof at the moment. It's interesting because like things were like absolute dog shit a few months ago. And I was sitting there saying like, I'm going to, like, I was, I turn around and, and I'll be honest with you. you know, this, I, I'm always, I'm always as, as honest as I can be. A few months ago, I was at the point where I said, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to let the company go. I'm going to go and get a job. This isn't working. What I'm doing is it doesn't feel right. I, I'm not happy with it. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not happy with myself. I'm not happy with my business. I'm going to let everything go because I was doing a lot of free work. I was working for free because I had, like, as I've mentioned before, this whole attachment around my personal life with my connection to money. And because I had this thing where I would say in the past, I don't like money, I hate money. I'm not saying I hate money now, I'm saying I, I hated money. That's what I said before. Like, there's a difference in my language now. I fucking love money. I love it. I love the things I can do with it. I can help more people. I can, look, I, I wouldn't be able to be in the position I'm in now without money. You know, I've, I've got amazing friends who have helped me. I've, I've definitely had like a lot of support over the last sort of month or so. But the reality is that with money, you know, I can, I can take a lot of the stress and a lot of the worry out of my own life by having money. Also, I have better relationships with people. You know, there's people that I owe money to and it's not nice owing money to people and not being able to pay them, especially when they need it because they've got money issues as well, right? So it, there's, there's, there's a huge thing around earning money. We need to earn money. And so working for free isn't going to help you. And I did it. I did it for so long. And it wasn't because I didn't, you know, I wasn't good at what I did or I was trying to build myself up. It was just because I had this attachment around money. And so when you let that go, look at yesterday's video, yesterday's Facebook Live that I did. When you look at that and you understand that you take the emotion out of the business, it's purely maths. When you understand the maths, when you know what you need to charge, when you understand what you, the process you need to go through to earn money, then... At the start, there's nothing wrong with working for free to build up testimonials, to build up case studies. Another way that you can work for free is if you want to proof of concept something. So you want to get something out there and you want to put it out to a small group of people. So you can give them access. If it's a digital product, if it's a service, you can do what's called a beta test, where you can take a group, a small group, don't just get your friends and family, don't just go on Facebook and say, the first five people get this for free. Don't do that. Let's get out of that mindset. Let's stop that. Because that doesn't work. Because all you're doing is getting random opinions from people that might not even be your target audience. You need to go out and research who it is that you want to work with. Who is your ideal customer? Go and find them and work with them for free. Get them on board. Because you're going to get a more accu accurate reflection of the feedback that you get for how you can move forward. You know, if you get people who are... Who are never going to work with you? They've got no intention of working with you. They never want to work with you. But you know, because they're your friend, they want to support you. That's nice. But the reality is that that's not what you need. It's not what you want. Really, what you want are people who would pay for your service, but can see the benefit of getting it for free in return for a case study or testimonial. You get proof of concept, which then allows you to tweak. You can tweak what you're doing so that you can improve it. When my book, when I wrote my book, I can tell you right now, I wrote my book, I changed it. The whole book got rewritten because it wasn't right. My workbook that I had, you know, I have a beautiful, beautiful workbook now. All of the pictures, all of the designs, everything that I've had done, it all looks really good now. This is version three. This is version three of my workbook. Version one that went out, looked dog shit. Version two, I had a friend help me and, and we created a better version. And so version three now, is much, much better. And so it's about getting it out there. And if you have to do that for free, that's fine. Get it out there, test it, adjust it, 
implement like the changes you need to make and then charge for it. But make sure you do. Get the testimonials, get the case studies, get the proof of concept, get something in return for doing it for free. Don't just market it to try and attract people. That's the wrong reason to work for free. And the other thing as well I'm going to end on this is self-worth. You've got to value yourself. If you're not getting paid for what you're doing, why are you doing it? And if you're saying, oh, I just want to hug trees and I just want to go out in nature, then that's fine. Go and do that. But don't sit there and tell me you're a business person if you're not getting paid for what you do. You haven't got a business. You've got a hobby. Nothing wrong with that, but just understand the difference. A hobby is something you enjoy. It's something you're passionate about. It's something you want to do. But a business is something that has financial reward at the end of the day. It's something where there is, you know, value, like you give value and you get money or you get something in return. Ideally, it has to be money because, as I've said before, if money doesn't come into the business, it's not a business. It's a hobby. And that's fine. Just know where you are. Just understand. Lynette says, so you should put a time scale on how long you do things for free. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think, personally, that it's good. I think it's good to have an allocated amount of time each month that you will do pro bono or you will do free work or you will give back. And it might be that you want to enrol one person a month or one person a quarter into a course that you have. You know, and you want to do that. It might be, and you use that for marketing as a way to get out. You know, you're going to take one person on for free. Or not for free. Because here's the other thing, right? Here's, I've talked about the benefits of working for free. Let me talk about the problems, because that's going to answer your question in there. Some of the problems with working for free. One, you get no money. That's a big problem, right? Because... As Derry, uh, my good friend Derry at Llewellyn Davison says, in business, you have two problems. That's it. You can, you can look at whatever it is that you want. You can, you can chunk it up as high and as low as you want. But ultimately, there are, in business, you will only ever have two problems. You either have a cash flow problem or you have a talent problem. You either have a problem with money or you have a problem with people. If you don't have money, it's because you don't have the right talent in your business. And if you don't have the right talent in your business, it's because you don't have the money to buy that talent. That's it. Because if you have the right people working for you, you can get shit done. It's talent and it's cash. That's it. That's it in business. That's it. And so if you're working for free, you don't have the cash. You don't have the money. And if you don't have the money, you can't bring in the talent. Which means you're going to be working for yourself for free. You'll be going around in circles. You may be fulfilling a need, telling a story, getting out there to a point. But I'm telling you now, you're not going to be having a successful, sustainable, ethical business that pushes you forward if you're working for free. Another problem, you're not going to be respected. There are people out there who will not take up my services because they're too cheap. And I can tell you right now, I had a conversation last night. I've taken some of the money... Uh, from some of the income that I've got coming in through my clients this week. And I looked at what I should do with it. And I thought, right, I can clear off a lot of uh, payments that I have to clear off. And I'm clearing off a, 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 the main ones that I need. But I've also just reinvested in my education. So in March, I'm going to be going out to America for three days. Three days in America. I'm going out there to work with a, a gentleman called Jason. And he has got a, um, an event and it's a three day event, it's at his house, it's out in America, $6,000, $6,000 just for the weekend. But the information that I'm going to get from him, see, by me valuing myself, let me just put this into context for you now. I've done a lot of free work before, all right, and it's hurt me, and I've been in a painful situation because of it. So now, because I've started valuing myself, because I got into a situation where I had to, there was no other option because I'm valuing myself now and I'm charging what I'm not even charging what I'm worth. I'm still too cheap, but I am charging because I'm charging now because people value me. People are coming to me and giving me money. I am investing that money in experts. I'm using that cash to pay for the talent. Now, Jason runs about eight million dollars a month in Facebook ads. He's got Frank Kern is one of his clients. He's got Mike Dillard as one of his clients. He deals with some of the biggest people in the world. And so this guy knows his shit. And so when I go out there and I spend a weekend with him, and there's 10 of us that are going out there. When I go and spend a weekend with him, and I like take that information and we build out all of my, my platforms and my channels for my marketing, of course it's going to put a rocket up my ass. Of course it's a lot of money. But here's the thing. His outcome, the conversation that we had, is that he wants to generate £100,000 a month 
in my business. So I'm talking about doing a hundred thousand pound month right now. He's talking about doing that consistently and how we can build that out consistently. So would you pay six thousand dollars to get a hundred thousand return if you could do it within three months? Because that's what he's working at. You know, you have to you have to speculate to accumulate. You have to spend to receive risk reward. However, you look at it. And you can't do that without the cash in the first place. So when you work for free, you won't have the ability by working for free to have the money to pay for these people. These are the big boys. Absolutely. You know, I've been talking with Jason. I've been talking with Russell Brunson. I've been talking with like a lot of people. And I'm not just doing this to name drop. This isn't just me going, oh, I'm working with these people. I'm doing all this stuff. You know, this isn't about that. This is about letting you know that when you start to value yourself, when you start to charge what you're worth, you will start to attract the people out there. Because, look, Jason said this in a video the other day. If you're ethical in your business, if you are ethical in your marketing, if you market with integrity, because I truly believe that what I do, I do it with integrity. You know, I'm vulnerable. And the reason I'm vulnerable is because, and, some, and, and this was said yesterday on the video, it would be easy for me to stand there as an expert and say, this is what you should do, this is what you should do, this is what you should do. But I'm sitting here saying, look, this is what you shouldn't do. And you shouldn't do it because I've done it and it doesn't work. Now, a lot of people don't talk about their mistakes and their vulnerabilities, and I do because I want you to know that it's easier for you to relate to me if you're going through a similar situation, and then you can see what I did and say, oh, shit, I don't want to do that. I'm going to avoid that situation. I'm going to do this instead. This is one of those conversations right now where I'm telling you about how I fucked up by working for free and how I didn't value myself and it caused a lot of pain. And as a result, because I didn't value myself, I got stressed. I got overwhelmed. Things got too much for me. I lost my wife. I lost my house. I lost everything I had around me because I wasn't valuing myself. Here's the fucked up thing. I flicked a switch in my head and everything turned on. It was already there. I built it all. I just never turned it on. So it's about self-worth. And that comes as one of the benefits of charging. You need to charge what you're worth. So another thing, not being respected enough. I mentioned that. You're educating people. All the time, when you're talking to people, you're educating them. And regardless whether you think you are or not, people are going to have a perception of you. They are going to judge you. No matter what you say, people are going to judge you. And so if you turn up saying, I'm going to work for free, I'm going to do everything, and I don't want to get paid for it, you are going to educate your clients to not pay you. You are going to educate your clients to think that it's okay for them to give, get things from you and to ask for your time and to constantly say, I want this, I want this, I want this. And it's really, really, really important to understand that if you educate a client to not pay you, you cannot then blame that client when they don't pay you. It's your fault. The, the, the buck stops with you. You have to take responsibility when you're not getting paid. It's your fault. It's not that you've got the wrong client. You've got, you might have the right client, but you just educated them wrong. You've got to understand that it's how you educate people. It's how, you, how people perceive you. It's what you do that translates into what you get. And so if you're out there saying, oh, it's okay, I will work for free. Oh, I don't want to get paid. Oh, just give me what you want. Then, then don't get annoyed when you get what you're given. You, know, you need to be specific. This is what it costs. This is what it's going to take. This is what I'm going to do. You'll get these results. Thank you, Laura. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, good point. Talk about the bad points. Yeah, absolutely. There's nothing wrong with that. But then you've got to be careful, again, because you don't want to talk about too many bad points where people go, oh, I'm not going near that person. You know, there is a fine line. And sometimes I have to just say, you know, I have to be careful because I don't want to say anything that's going to damage me. And I've done some videos before that have damaged me, but then I've done some videos before that have been amazing. And there's that risk, and I never know what's going to happen, but... And I, I don't really, I script out a little bit, like I have bullet points on what I'm going to say, but this isn't like scripted or anything. This is raw. This is just coming from me. This is coming from my experiences, from my life, so I can help you. Sometimes I talk and it's crap. Sometimes I talk and it's amazing. Who knows? It's like lottery, right? You, it's free. You get what you pay for. Um, I talked about not being valued. That's one of the things. And I also talked about no leverage. If you haven't got money, you've got no leverage. There's People respond when they pay for things. All right, like I'll give you an example. It's a very quick story, and this is about Tony Robbins, and I think I've mentioned this before. Tony Robbins has a process. I don't know if he still has it. I know he had it, and I've not used this story for a while, so I don't even know how accurate it is anymore, but fuck it, it's a good story. So call it a fable, call it whatever you want. What I would say is 
when you look at Tony's model of what he does, he has productized the living shit out of himself. Tony Robbins has more products than anybody else I know. He's got pictures of his of his audio books, of his of his t-shirts, of his uh, courses, of this and that and the other, and all of this stuff. He's got like every single area, every single medium. He's productized everything. Just go to one of his events and look out the back. It's like people selling all sorts of stuff. Now, if you want one-on-one -on -one time with Tony, and again, I don't know how accurate this is now, but this is just from what I heard before. You have to book. To get one-on-one -on -one time with Tony, you have to book. And there's a 12-month waiting list, from what I, I'm aware. This is, this is what I was told, anyway. There was a 12-month waiting list. All right? So you have to wait a year to even have a conversation with Tony. Now, to, to be eligible for that waiting period, you have to invest a million, I think it's a million pounds or a million dollars, but you have to pay a million dollars. So when you pay a million dollars, you get put on a waiting list. You then wait 12 months. After that 12 months, you've paid out a million dollars, you've waited 12 months, you then get in front of Tony and you're like, hi, and Tony's like, what do you need? And you're like, I need this. And he's like, I can't help you. And you're like, what? But I've just paid you a million and I've waited a year. What the fuck do you mean you can't help me? And he's like, I can't help you. And he's like, why, why should I help you? Like, you know, and, and then he gets you to explain all of the reasons. You're like, no, but Tony, you have to help me because you're the man and you're the person and you're the one and I need you for this and this and this. And he gets you to build up all of this leverage inside yourself. So you've got a financial commitment. You've had this time commitment. You're at the point now where you're so like, this is the answer, this is the answer, this is going to fix everything. And you get there and he's like, this isn't going to fix everything. And you're like, no, but it has to. And he gets you to explain all the reasons why it's going to fix it. And then all he does is hold you accountable to it. It's fucking brilliant. It's a brilliant system. And it works because if people haven't paid for something, they don't value it. They don't appreciate it. They don't respect it. I can tell you that. Just look at a moving company. Look at a moving company. If you've paid, like, when, when, I, when, when, when me and Jamie, when we bought our furniture, we paid a lot of money for our furniture. And so I know Jamie's gone and I'm sort of left with it all and I've got all the furniture now and I've taken over the payments for the, um, you know, because we did like 0%. It was... Um, like a free and all percent thing, so it was like silly not to, right? But we we paid a lot of money, a lot of money for our furniture. And so when it was being moved, I, because it's my investment, because it's my money, because I've paid for it, I'm like, please be very, very careful with this table. It's very, very expensive. Please be careful. The people who are moving it are like, it's a table. All right, it's a nice table, but it's a table. They have no emotional connection to it. They have no attachment to it. There's nothing there. There's no leverage there. It's just a fucking table and they're helping me move. For me, I have an emotional connection because I've worked hard to get that money to pay for that table or maybe not because it's interest free. But you, do you get the point? It's like the, the point I'm trying to make is it's the attachment. It's the attachment that people have. It's the leverage. Money gives you leverage. And so when you're not charging people for something, you can't expect to get results. If you give something away for free and then people don't do it and you're like, oh, why aren't they doing it? And you start to question whether your stuff's good enough. It's not that your stuff's not good enough. It's that people just don't value it. It's like, oh, it's another free thing. How many books have people bought that they don't read? You know, if you, if people, if you, if you charge someone a thousand pounds for something, you can pretty much guarantee they're going to go through it. They're going to go through it because they paid for it. And so there's that element. But you don't just want to charge for the sake of it because you don't want to be a douchebag, right? So, just to sum up, working for free is not a bad thing as long as you are getting something in return for it. I wouldn't say it's for free. There is always going to be an exchange, but it just doesn't have to be a monetary exchange. You can work for other things that don't have to be financial reward. You can work for testimonials. You can work for case studies. You know, you can actually work like I'm doing now to broadcast yourself. But if you're going to do that, I would do it one to many, not one to one. And also understand that there are some problems as well, because if you work for free, you're going to have no money. You're not going to have the right talent. No one's going to respect you. You're not going to have the leverage over people. You're not going to value yourself, yourself. And so you really, really need to understand the difference between I want to do this for free just to get myself out there. And I want to do this for free to build myself up so that I can charge more in the future. I hope this helps. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been another midday mastery session. I went over a little bit longer. I know it's been half an hour. Any questions, let me know. I'll check through now. But apart from that, um, have an amazing day. Uh, I'll see you back tomorrow. If you think that this is valuable, please tag someone in the comments. If you know someone who's working for free, tag them. Get them to watch this video. Get them to, look, if you're working for free, stop it. 
Stop working for free. All right? Value yourself. Respect your clients, respect yourself, and start charging what you're worth. Okay, if someone needs that message, please tag them so that they can see it. Just tell them to fast forward to the end, right? If you think that this is valuable, please share it. I'd appreciate that. Don't forget, I'm going to upload this to YouTube, so you can pop over to my YouTube channel, and I'll post that in the comments later. Apart from that, have an amazing day, and I will speak to you all tomorrow, 12 o'clock, for another Midday Mastery. Take care. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.